a new type of uh, visualization we're going to talk about are energy diagrams. I think these are very essential and part of what makes them so important is that they come up a lot in other physics classes, including electricity and magnetism. So we'll work with them a little bit now, but this interpretation is incredibly important. So the thing to realize is that you have two axes, but that we're actually drawing more than just one plot. So this is a very different type of uh, situation than just plotting a single variable in that there's going to be multiple lines that appear. So on your vertical axis is energy. Now this might be quantitative, so it might have units of joules, but the other thing to realize is we will have more than one type of energy on our vertical axis. On the horizontal, we have position. Now this is going to be one dimensional position. So this could be X, this could be Y, this could be generalized to be S, but you have one position on your horizontal axis. So what's important here is we're not talking about time. Remember that we rarely talk about time explicitly when we're dealing with energy. Energy is simply a before and after, but we can talk about energy and position. So that's what we're doing here. Now there are two lines to think about. One is the potential versus S, I'm calling it here, but potential versus position curve. Note that this line is explicitly labeled to be the potential from gravity, but this could be a generalized potential. The idea of potential energy is that it is always a potential of position. So this isn't saying that a specific object has this potential. It's that space itself, well not space space, but position itself is defining what this potential energy is. So for instance in this case if it's height then we know that gravity uh, has potential energy given by mass times g times the height. So that's a line. You can have a spring potential energy diagram and you could have a more general potential energy diagram. For instance a roller coaster that goes up and down hill. If we actually think about position in X, the height of the roller coaster is actually then determining at that X position, at that horizontal position, what its potential energy is. The second line that you must draw to have this be a useful uh, energy diagram is the total energy. And that's going to be a horizontal line. So the only time that you use energy diagrams is when you have conservation of mechanical energy. So this is not changing, and that's going to be the sum of your kinetic and your potential. So this line is actually specific to your particle while the blue line for potential is more specific to just the situation. So one way of thinking about that is again if you imagine an energy diagram representing a roller coaster on a track that maybe I start my roller coaster cart with different amounts of energy meaning that at a given height on the ramp it would have a different amounts of kinetic energy. So how you then read this diagram is you take for one specific position for instance Y1 here you take the total energy, energy in this case mechanical energy is conserved, so the total energy is always the same, and the distance between, you know, zero and your line is going to be the potential energy at that point. The remaining distance, so what's above that line, is the kinetic energy at that point. So that is for our object that started with whatever specific energy. So at a different position, it will have a different gravitational energy in this case and a different kinetic energy. So let's look at how this compares to our energy bar charts and thinking about just sketches. So we're going to use the simple situation of a ball heading upwards. Note that the total energy line is the same in each of these cases. The ball starts with some initial energy, it's an isolated system, and it's non-dispersive. There's no thermal energy to worry about, no change thermal energy, so the total energy stays the same. Initially it is 100% kinetic, so our potential is zero. So that's starting here at y equals zero. At a later time it's headed upwards, so now it's at a different position, and I keep saying at a later time because you know that that's what's happening, but of course time doesn't appear anywhere here. Some of the energy is now potential, some of it's kinetic, and you notice here that the total energy has stayed the same, but now we have more potential, less kinetic, and at the top of the point, we get to a point where all of the energy is potential. The potential curve intersects the total energy curve here, and then it heads back down. Note that again at this point, this plot looks identical to that. That tells you the amount of energy, you have no idea if it's heading up or down. 
Another important energy diagram is looking at a spring. So the potential energy of a spring is going to look like a parabola since we have that the potential energy is one half times the spring constant, lowercase k, times this delta x in this case. And remember that this is your displacement. So this is how far is the spring compressed or extended from the equilibrium length L0. So as you move to the left or to the right, that is actually your delta x. So at L0, at the equilibrium length of the spring, you have zero potential energy. So we could actually say that this is right explicitly zero. But then as you move to the left or the right, you have something symmetric that looks like a parabola. So we then would say we have some total energy, and that could be, for instance, the position we start at if we start the object at rest. So if I say that I compress it all the way to this point, and I then let it go from rest, we know that our total energy started at this potential energy, but it then our object moves to the left, and at that point of equilibrium, all of your energy is kinetic energy. So this is a really helpful way to think about what's happening, and I'll talk a little bit more next about how to interpret these.